I am Forrest Frosty Crummel, the Transitional Minister of St. Paul United Church of Christ on a cold winter's day in central Illinois, where snowfalls of up to 12 inches have made travel difficult. So I'm speaking to you today from, from my home with a part of my library behind me. In the fifth chapter of Luke's Gospel, we have a story of Jesus calling his first disciples Simon Peter, James, and John. They were fishermen. They had been out fishing all night when Jesus approached them. And not having had any success, he invited them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat, to go out into the deep waters, the more chaotic waters. And there they brought in a big haul. As they brought their nets ashore, Simon Peter realized that he wasn't merely dealing with a stranger, but with the stranger that breaks into our lives. Although he didn't fully understand at the time, this, this stranger whose name is Jesus would change Simon Peter's life as well as the life of the entire world. He fell to his knees and begged for Jesus to leave because he was a sinner, but Jesus has a way of seeking out sinners. And so he invited Simon Peter, James, and John to come and be his disciples, in Luke's tradition, the first disciples. God has this way of uh, calling the most unlikely people uh, to follow, to be pro proclaimers of, of God's kingdom. God's got a regular rogues gallery. Consider some of the patriarchs of the Old Testament. Abraham, for example, invited by God to leave his homeland and all that he knew in order to venture off into some unknown territory to, to a new land, armed solely with the promise that God would make him the father of many nations. Abraham and his wife Sarah were childless for the biggest part of their lives. And Abraham was not a person of sterling character. At the first danger, he tried to pawn off his wife as his sister in order to save his own skin. And when he and Sarah were childless well into their later years, Abraham took Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar, into his home and conceived a child, Ishmael, with her. Ishmael was to be Sarah and Abraham's child, their heir. They were going to circumvent what God had promised, or at least help God along. But when Sarah became pregnant herself and gave birth to a son, Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael out into a desert wilderness, presumably to die or to be lost. And then you have Moses. Moses, who was called by God out of a flaming bush that would not be consumed, Moses, who was a murderer and a fugitive, called by God to lead the Israelites out of the chains of Egyptian slavery and to help them begin their journey toward that promised land, a land promised to Abraham generations earlier, a land flowing with milk and honey. And then you have Rahab, a harlot, a foreigner, who protected Joshua's spies as they scoped out this land of milk and honey. And of course you have David. David, uh, a shepherd boy plucked from obscurity to become the king of Israel, who let power go to his head and seduced Bathsheba, had her husband murdered so that he might marry her and hide their rendezvous. It is said in, uh, in tradition that as part of his penitence, David penned the 51st Psalm in which he confesses that he has sinned against God and God alone. And so this story, this collection of rogues continues up to the New Testament with Jesus calling Simon Peter, James and John, Simon Peter, who is impetuous, hot-headed, flies off at the handle, quick to judge, someone who denied Jesus three times, James and John who secretly came to Jesus in order to see if they could sit in his left and right hand when he came into his kingdom to, to be able to have positions of power and prestige, not seeking the common good. You have Judas who betrayed him. 
this rogues gallery includes you and I. For none of us are perfect. As the Apostle Paul said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even Paul himself was not originally named Paul, but Saul. He was a Pharisee's Pharisee. He was a very educated man who sought out and persecuted the people of the way, the early church, un until Jesus, the resurrected Lord, came into his life and turned his life around. You see, in God's kingdom, we don't need to be perfect. God calls each and every one of us to take him seriously, to walk in the way of Jesus, the, the way of truth and of life. It's not about who we are, but who God is. It's not about what we do, but what God does through us. And therein, I believe, lies the good news of the gospel. No one is beyond the bounds of God's grace. Grace, grace, God's grace makes us whole. It's an amazing grace that saves a sinner like you and I. May you have a very blessed week and may God's grace touch you in a way that you can perceive. And may the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth be with you today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Until we see each other again, God bless.